you know, we've seen such so much social upheaval um, in the last few months, especially we've seen um, a, a, a massive social uprising in, in the wake of the George Floyd uh, murder. We've, you know, there's clearly kind of unrest on the ground. And like the two guys that the system coughs up are these kind of like ancient dudes who, like you said, have zero political vision. And it's just, it struck me that the, that the, the energy on the ground kind of doesn't reflect is, is just not reflected at all um, by the system. Um, and I just don't know what comes from that, you know, like it just, I mean, obviously like increased cynicism and, and, de- you know, that decreased voter turnout and all that stuff, but like, what, what, co- like, how does the, how do you break out of it? I just, well, we, we know I what's really... going to, we know what's going to come from it. I don't think the Democratic Party can be called a political party. It doesn't function as a political party. The base has zero possibility to affect the policies of the party. Uh, Corporate money uh, funded the campaign of Hillary Clinton, just like it funds the campaign of Joe Biden. Without that money, uh, the hierarchy of the Democratic Party, Pelosi, Schumer, all the others wouldn't exist. Um, Their power comes from funneling that money to the anointed candidates. Uh, it's not a it's not a political party. It's uh, part of the oligarchic duopoly. Nor do we live in a democracy. And Sheldon Woolen has, I think, uh, explicated this. Uh, uh, probably we lost him a couple years ago. Or I don't know how you. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know how you feel about Woolen, uh, Gerald. But uh, I would say he's probably our greatest political philosopher. His last book, Democracy Incorporated. He. Uh, lip picks up on a term from politics and vision is a masterpiece where he calls the system inverted totalitarianism. So what he's really talking about is a system that replicates uh, the beginning of the Roman empire. So you still had the facade of the Republic. You still had a Senate. uh, You still had the language, the iconography and the symbols of a Republic, but internally within the United States, uh, all of the levers of powers have been seized by corporations, including of course, the, the media, um, which is why Gerald Horn, who I f- argue is one of the greatest historians, Eric Foner, Gerald, and a few others in the United States, uh, is not on public television, where he should be, uh, or NPR. Um, and, uh, and so what happens is when any time throughout history, go all the way back to Aristotle's writing about uh, aristocracy, is that when a tiny cabal seizes power uh, and begins to accrue to itself greater wealth and greater power, which is precisely what is happening, uh, and becomes more and more disconnected from the population. I think the elites have very little understanding of the rage within the legitimate rage within the streets or the suffering. Uh, Then uh, the, the kind of, as Gramsci writes, the kind of cultural forms of control, which are immense, uh, are less efficacious, and you have to resort to the more naked forms of coercion, which is police violence. I mean, the two major forms of social control in the United States are our prison system and our and our militarized, out of control stormtroopers in police uniforms. Uh, those are forms of social control because in our internal colonies, uh, we have let we have abandoned primarily people of color, but now, as I spoke about my own family in Maine, they've been abandoned as well. Um, The difference is, and James Baldwin, I think, pointed this out, is that uh, he talks about why, Baldwin writes about why uh, black uh, Americans, particularly men, don't tend to go through the kind of midlife crisis that white middle-aged men go through. And he said, because you learn very early as an African-American that the system is totally gained against you. Um, But within white society, um, and because of white supremacy um, and white privilege, uh, the white working class was able to achieve a certain level uh, within the capitalist system, uh, often denied to the black working class. And remember that, you know, in the auto plants or uh, you know, the Singer sewing factory in Elizabeth, New Jersey, they would hire black workers, but they were always paid less and given, like the black workers in the Singer plant always worked in the foundry, which was more dangerous and more, this was typical. Um, but now you see uh, that white working class has essentially been cut off, the inability to find a place to self-actualize themselves, to 
uh, really have a future uh, has been denied to them. Uh, and what that has done, we'll go to Emil Durkheim, the great sociologist, is rupture the social bonds. Uh, and when you rupture those social bonds, Durkheim argues, I think correctly, uh, you reach a point where uh, people begin to express themselves through very self-destructive pathologies. Durkheim's work on suicide, 1898, um, uh, explains this very well, where he asks the question, what is it that drives individuals and societies to carry out acts of self-annihilation? And that's precisely what we're seeing, which was the focus of my last book, America, the Farewell Tour. Uh, I've long written about the decline of empire, et cetera, and the internal marginalization and um, uh, you know, social inequality and everything else. But I just looked at these pathologies, the opioid crisis, suicides, hate groups. I spent time with Knights of the Alt-Right. As a matter of fact, I was actually in, in a, outside of Binghamton, New York, in upstate New York, around a bonfire in the woods with them in the middle of the nights, praying to God, none of them Googled me. Um, uh, but as Durkheim says, people who seek the annihilation of others are driven by, and I think this is correct, desires of self-annihilation. Um, so when we look at the, the deep uh, malaise, the, what Durkheim would call the anomie of American society, the deep dislocation, the rupturing of social bonds, the seizing up of our political system, the looming climate crisis, and let me uh, also include the inability to control a rapacious military machine which is uh, probably the most, in the end, the most dangerous force to our democracy. At the late Roman Empire, you had the Roman Empire uh, attempting to support a one million man army. And, and in the end, they picked uh, the Praetorian Guard, picked the emperors. As a matter of fact, they, in the end, they were auctioning off the role of emperor. So that's where we're headed. I mean, that's where we're going. We are replicating, as Joseph Tainer wrote in A Collapse of Complex Societies, the kind of disintegration of of a late empire or late civilization, and all of the um, indicators uh, are familiar. T T Tainter looks at twenty four civilizations, but we repli we've replicated all of them. The difference is that this time, because of the climate, when we go down, the whole planet's going to go with us. <laughs> That's where we're headed. Sounds great. Um... <laughs> Can't wait. No, it's, Can't wait. What do you really think? Just kidding. No, but no. you know, but but this this you know this is the other thing. I can't. I mean, I, I spent two decades not living in this country. This childish mania for hope uh, is crippling uh, and disempowering. I mean, I was a war correspondent. We made very. I was in Sarajevo, Salvador, all these places. We made very cold assessments. I mean, people were being killed all around us of what the weapon systems were at the end of the road, what the capacity of it to do damage was, and we responded. People had a very Pollyannish view uh, of their own invulnerability are dead. Uh, and I think part of the problem is that we're not adult enough to face what's in front of us. And if we can't face what's in front of us, then we, we don't respond in, in, in an effective or a meaningful way. Um, so as soon as you lay out you know how bleak it is Pe people go it's a bummer it's some you know you know if you want hope that's not news that's advertising but unfortunately the culture is so awash in lies uh, and we're so uh, egregiously manipulated uh, that we can't even see what's in front of our face i mean california is, is incinerated as is australia the oceans are acidifying I mean, the oceans go, we're finished, by the way, it's over. Uh, the ice sheets are collapsing. And what are we doing? We're, we're watching Donald Trump. 